We shall now spend a little time to talk about the graphs of the trigo ratios. Okay, in front of us now is the curve of uh, y equals sine x. Alright, now uh, what happens is when you plot the curve out, okay, what you mean is if you sub in x equals 0, you get sine 0, you get 0. Um, you know, when you sub in x equals to pi over 2, which is 0 0.5 pi, okay, you get 1. And if you sub in um, x as pi, okay, and then of course uh, you get um, 0 and so on. Okay, you, you, if you go and plot point by point, this is the shape exactly uh, how you get it. Alright, now the more important question that you must ask, or you know, you may have in your head right now is, Okay, other than just sketching it, I mean, by plotting point by point, I to get this shape out. Just why exactly the sine curve look the way it looks like now? Okay, let's take a look and try to understand why does the sine curve look like this. Now, suppose we draw a unit circle. Okay, a unit circle is a circle with um, radius of 1. Okay, so very obviously here, this red circle here um, has got radius of 1. Okay, center is at 0, 0, and, and so on. Alright, just how does the circle and what we know about sine uh, can give us the curve that looks like this. Alright, let's say if I were to have a right angle triangle inside this quadrant, okay, in the first quadrant, and I name this angle called theta. Okay, or x, or really, it's really up to you. Now, since I know that this radius is 1, so what I do know is, well, sine theta will be equal to, well, this vertical height, isn't it? Okay, now let's call this vertical height um, y. Okay, so this vertical height is now y, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1. So therefore, we know that, well, our y is actually equal to sine theta. Okay, now exactly what happened as our theta increases? Okay, let's say um, theta is a small angle here. Now let's say the theta increases to become a little bigger. Alright, so so you know theta this this angle here, okay, slightly greater than the original theta. And we draw the same vertical line down. Okay, we realize that the vertical line actually increases. Okay, so the y actually increases. Alright, with respect to the theta. So as the theta increases, okay, positively, uh, theta moves, uh, becomes greater, our y values get higher. Just what exactly goes on here is the fact that if the theta becomes 90 degrees, okay, which means that the theta comes here. Right, there won't be any right angle triangle at all, isn't it? Okay, there won't be any tri triangles at all. But the fact is, the the y value will now be one. All right, because when theta is ninety degrees, the y value is one. And what we should start to realize is the fact that this one is actually corresponding to our sine curve here. Okay, and this angle here. Okay, will give us the height at this point. And of course, when the theta is the original first angle here, we realize that the y value is here. So we can see that this is the same as this y value. Alright? And this vertical height beneath the curve is the same as this vertical height here, isn't it? Okay, and of course, when it is 1, well, it is 1 here as well. So what we can tell is, of course, as the theta increases, our y will increase. Okay, and this represented by this curve. Okay, the y-axis, we will be it will be our y value. Okay, and of course, the x-axis is actually the value of theta. Okay, because as theta increases, okay, and definitely what it means is that well, at this point, will be when theta is at ninety degrees. All right, so. Then, what goes on after the 90 degrees? Well, as you can see, as the theta increases to become obtuse, so more than 90 degrees, okay, you realize that the y value, okay, that means the vertical height, is reduced, is less than 1, okay? So this vertical height, as you would see, okay, if you draw a horizontal line across, I, hope, I will not want to draw that because you make it look very um, complicated. Okay, so it just use your eyes and you know imagine a line across, and you start to realize that hey, this is the same y value. 
All right. Even more interestingly is when theta increases to be more than 180 degrees. So let's say, well, theta becomes an angle that's more than 180 degrees. Okay, we withdraw the right angle triangle. This is our y now, okay? And the y is now a negative value, and, and that is why, okay, we realize that the curve becomes negative in value. And this is the y value that we're talking about here. So when theta is in the third quadrant, our y value will be negative. Okay, something else is going on here that is rather interesting is the fact that when theta is 180 degrees, we start to realize when the theta is 180 degrees, again, there is no right angle triangle, isn't it? It will be just this flat line here. Okay, so this flat line will not give us any vertical height, isn't it? And that is why when theta is 180 degrees, the vertical height is zero. So what we can deduce will be definitely this point here will be when theta is equal to 180 degrees. Now, what this tells us is, of course, that the rest of the, the sine curve, okay? When it's at 360 degrees again, there will be no more y value, and therefore when x is at 360 degrees, or rather theta is at 360 degrees, okay, our y will become 0 once more, okay? So... Perhaps I should show you a little bit of what exactly is going on here, animated. Well, this is exactly what I've been trying to tell you. All right. So as you can see, the Y value, which is represented by the blue vertical line here, will move around the circle as our theta increases. Okay, so as theta move anti-clockwise direction. So this is exactly what is going on. All right. So the sine curve, actually, what it really represents is actually the vertical height in our circle, All right? The vertical height in the right angle triangle in each quadrant as our theta changes, and so that is why our y equal to sine x curve, okay? Shortly, we call it our sine curve. All right, will look like this. Okay, so what we found out or what we have learned so far is that actually the sine curve goes on forever. Okay, it doesn't just stop at 2 pi and uh, it, it goes on forever for negative as well. Okay, well simply because there will be negative angles, okay, and, and therefore there will be uh, the right angle triangles in the quadrants themselves. So as the angle goes along, as the theta moves along, there will be y values. And that is why our sine curve is continuous this way. What is perhaps more important about the knowledge of our sine curve is the fact that we also must realize that the sine curve, or in fact any trigonal curve as we'll learn later on, is always divided into four equal parts that represent the four quadrants. Alright, just what am I talking about? Well, in this sketch of um, the sine curve, right, the x-axis value is given in um, 0 0.5 pi, pi, 1.5 pi, and so it's in the radian. So, of course, well, the assumption here is that you must be pretty familiar with radian and degrees. So, um, 1 pi is 180 degrees, and therefore half a pi, this will be 90 degrees. So, as we saw earlier on from the animation, right, is the fact that when theta is uh, equal to 90 degrees, Right, we have the full radius as the height. And therefore, when theta is 90 degrees, right, our y value will be the highest. And that is called the maximum value. And our sine curve, the maximum value will always be 1. right? Because the radius can never be more than 1. Similarly, when theta is 270 degrees, our y will be the minimum value. It all happens inside the circle that we saw earlier on, right? That if theta is equal to 90 degrees, right, the height y will be the maximum. And when theta is at 270 degrees, the height y will be the minimum, which is minus 1. So that is why our sine curve, minimum value for the sine curve will be negative 1. The curve is divided into four equal parts to represent the four different quadrants. Okay, as we see here, this first, second, third, fourth. Alright, and also, based on what we already learned before, the, the signs of the trigo ratios, we know that, well, all signs teacher crazy. So we know that sine theta is positive in the first two quadrants, as represented by the curve here, isn't it? As you can see, this is the first quadrant, alright, second quadrant, 
uh, third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, we see that sine x, okay, our y value is actually positive. Okay, in the third and the fourth quadrant, our y value will become a negative. Now, we also know that the sine curve goes on forever, okay? In fact, it goes on forever to the left, goes on forever to the right, okay? Now, but what we do know, okay, what we can see here from the graph is the fact that in one full round of a circle, that means from 0 to 2 pi, uh, there is this distinct pattern, okay? Now, this pattern is repetitive, as you can see, so we call this pattern here one period. Alright, so every one pattern, one such pattern, we call it one period. Now this is rather important because later on, as we uh, proceed on, okay, we will need to uh, figure out how many periods are there, and so on and so forth. Okay, so for a basic sine curve, one period will be this one cycle. The next thing I'd like to draw attention to will be this thing called the magnitude or the amplitude. So the amplitude refers to distance between the highest point of the curve to the middle of the curve. So in this case, this is our curve and the middle of the curve will be the x-axis. So the amplitude will be this vertical height here, which will be 1. All right now this is very very important because later on as we will learn we are going to shift the curve upwards downwards left right center. Okay, so we need to know exactly where the uh, magnitude is okay or the amplitude is